Let's start at the beginning. Operating principles. Specifically for heavier than air aircraft. So what I mean by that is we're going to restrict our discussion to heavier than air vehicles. So that means we're not talking about airships balloons, etc. Heavier than air aircraft means airplanes and helicopters. And in this course specifically, we're going to focus on airplanes. So, first, most basic question, how does an airplane fly? Well, in general, airflow over uh, the wings. Generates lift or force. And this counteracts gravity. The force of which is expressed as the weight. aircraft that's moving through air also experiences a resistive force. Which opposes the motion. We call this drag. like any force that uh, is ultimately a frictional force, this tends to want to slow down the aircraft. And again, this is from friction. Primarily. So to overcome that drag, uh, and maintain some desired flight speed, we need to generate thrust, which is another force which opposes drag. And the generation of thrust is the job of the propulsion system. So if we just draw this out as a quick schematic here. L is lift. D drag, W is the weight, and 
use F for thrust. Draw a little coordinate system here. And uh, notional aircraft. So then thrust is generated here, drag opposes the motion, the lift force acts up, and the weight force acts down. So if um, we're only considering steady level flight to start, so constant speed, constant altitude, uh, then we want a very simple force balance. The sum of the forces should be zero, right? So if we balance forces in the y direction, we get lift equals weight. And in the x direction, we get force equals drag. Now, you've probably seen this before, but this is a very simplistic view. So there are several important questions that arise um, from just thinking a little bit more about this figure and this analysis. So, important questions. Okay. So first important question, where do these various forces And also, what moments do they generate? All right. We're not always going to be so lucky that all of the forces act through the center of mass of the airplane. So we're going to have to consider moments in addition to forces for sure. Second question, how do the forces depend on the conditions at which the aircraft's flying? And finally, the third question, is this traditional force-based approach that I've outlined here the best way to analyze the performance of an aircraft? Maybe there's a better way, at least sometimes. of a given aircraft. Okay, so in the remainder of this lecture, we're going to address these three questions.